Okay, let's make this button text conditionally say show or hide depending on whether that group is actually visible or not. Okay, so we only want it to say hide, okay, if this group is actually visible. And we only want it to say, to say show if the group is invisible. So how do we make that behavior happen? Well, rather than going to the workflow tab, okay, which is really about changing the states of elements and, 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 and other parts of your application, um, we actually want our elements to react to the state of the application or to or react to the state of other elements that are on the page. So to start with, let's just change this text to say hide, okay? We know that that's gonna be like the default behavior. When the, when the page is loaded, this group is gonna be visible. So we can have this say hide, but when it's invisible, we actually want this text to change to something else. So the way to do that is actually go, going into the conditional tab Okay, and that's actually gonna def let us define some statements sort of similar to what we've done here in the only when. Some statements that if they evaluate to true, okay, then we're gonna let the, 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 the element itself, this button actually behave differently. So what I can do is define another condition, right? And now you see, you know, I've got this very similar input that we just had for that only when condition. So I can say, basically the same condition. Look, when that group master is visible, or rather when it isn't visible, okay, now I can actually change the behavior of this button by changing a particular property. So there's a whole bunch of different options that we can have here, right? Like I could change the font color when the group is invisible. I could change the background color of this button when the group is invisible. What we're actually looking for though is the text. So I can actually change this text to say show only when that group master isn't visible, right? So now if I come over and preview the page again, okay, we've got hide showing because that's our default behavior, okay? Anything that we have in this main properties panel here, okay, is going to be present on this button unless it's overridden by something in the conditional tab. So the conditions, take precedence over what you define here in the main properties view. So now if I click hide, you can see that this button now is actually changing to show. And if I go and click on this inspect button, okay, which is part of the debugger, that's gonna let me click on any particular element on the page and get a whole bunch of metadata about that element, including what conditions are acting on it. So you can see this green condition, meaning that condition is currently active, is saying that, look, the group master isn't visible, all right? And in that case, the text should be show, all right? Just to make this very concrete, just before we sign out of this video, okay? I wanna just clarify the distinction between workflows, okay, and conditional statements. Okay, so workflows are really about pushing changes to the state of the app, right? And when I say the state of the app, that could be anything, you know, any elements that you change, any of the properties of some of those elements, right? Workflows are pushing those changes onto the application. But for conditional statements, it's really the opposite. Right? Think of conditional statements, right, which are living inside of elements as watching the state of the application. And when the state of the application changes, right, then they are gonna change. Then the elements themselves are gonna behave differently. So they are reacting as opposed to acting on the application. Okay, so that's some really basic functionality to do with the design and workflow tabs. But what about this data tab 
over here. Now, this is really like the heart of your application because this is where you give your application a memory so that users can log in and actually do stuff and save stuff and interact with other users, interact with your application in meaningful ways. So I know the databases, if you're not familiar with them already, database can be a little bit of a scary word, but we're gonna demystify it in the next video.